For a scientist, there's maybe nothing more frustrating than seeing yet another clickbait news article go by talking about a new paper that just came out. The titles massively sensationalize the content, and often the entire article is based on the abstract of the paper. Then the title of the article is spread around as fact when the reality is that if you read the paper, it has nothing to do with what the article claims. The truth is, reading journal papers is actually a skill and takes a lot of practice. It also requires that you're familiar with scientific methods and ideally the content of the paper. So it's not really surprising that news anchors screw it up basically constantly. There's a reason that they make you read so many papers while you're in university. Sure, it's partially grunt work, but it's also there to teach you the skill of understanding and processing huge walls of highly technical text. This video will be the first in a new series where we take a journal paper and take it apart piece by piece so we can actually understand what's going on. Sometimes the paper will be great and covering something exciting. Sometimes the paper will be sensationalized garbage and we'll explore exactly why they're garbage. My hope is that through this you'll learn the ins and outs of reading papers and also get to learn some really cool stuff in the process. When I was in university, they didn't actually teach you how to write a paper. They just told you to write one and then tore it apart piece by piece so you know what you did wrong. For this first video, I'm going to be taking a similar approach. We're going to start with a paper that is utter garbage so you know what not to do. I would highly suggest going to Sci-Hub, link in the description, and downloading the paper yourself so you don't need to take my word for anything. And if I make a mistake, feel free to point it out in the comments. Holding scientists accountable is very important. The first paper we're going to be reading is called Effect of Canola Oil Consumption on Memory, Synapse, and Neuropathology in Triple Transgenic Mouse Model of Alzheimer's Disease. Or, as the articles that cite it say, canola oil makes you stupid and worsens memory, depending on what you read. You can already see the difference between the two. The paper itself is only referring to the effects on triple transgenic mice, while the article generalizes that to humans. So, let's get into it. If you've never read a paper before, the basic pieces are the abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion, and images. The abstract is supposed to summarize the entire paper and give a general idea of what was done and the results. However, they can often be highly misleading, so it's important to always read the full paper. The next thing to look at are the images. A good paper's images will tell a story where each builds on the previous image. These images can be graphs or simple cartoons to help visualize what's going on. Often, you can get a really good idea of the content and quality of a paper from the images and the abstract. The introduction section is meant to give background on the topic. What is being studied, what has been done before, and why should we care? If you're totally new to the field that the paper is written for, it's usually a good idea to read these. For me, if I was reading a paper in a field I'm familiar with, like nanotech, I'll often skip this part and go straight to the methods because I use papers more like baking recipes in many cases. The methods section is by far the most important. It is supposed to detail exactly what the researchers did in enough detail that anyone can take it and reproduce the results. However, there's lots of things to look out for which we'll discuss in a moment. If the methods section is poorly written or missing information, it makes it impossible to reproduce and casts serious doubt on the author's findings. Also, some authors will write papers as a way to show off their work, but sometimes word everything so the paper is impossible to re reproduce on purpose. This is to prevent other groups replicating and advancing the work before the authors get a chance. Authors will often do this if there's a follow-up paper already in the works, but this practice should always be avoided. Frankly, this is one of the most annoying things you'll find in a paper. The results section is a bit counterintuitive in that it only describes the results. There's no discussion of their meaning or interpretation. Again, the results section is rife with landmines, and there's lots of ways that people can manipulate the data they present, so care needs to be taken in analyzing the results. Finally, the discussion or conclusion section is the place where researchers can talk about the implications of their findings and the meaning behind them. This is actually one of the trickiest parts to interpret because of how loosely the authors may use their results to draw their conclusions. If the authors are making sweeping conclusions but don't have the results to back them up, you should always be wary. This is another area where journalists can get trapped, as the things the author discusses may not actually have any basis in reality. Okay, now that we know the bones, let's get to the meat of this paper. If we look at the abstract, we can get an idea of what's going on. They took a small sample of mice that have been bred to develop a disease that sort of resembles Alzheimer's, and fed them either normal mouse food or mouse food with canola oil in it. After six months, they claimed to see an increase in weight, a decrease in memory, and changes to various protein levels of the mice. They then conclude by saying that their findings show no benefit to a canola oil rich diet and that the results do not support a switch from olive oil to canola oil. Moving on to the introduction, there's only a few things that stand out. 
The first is the basis for this study is the Mediterranean diet, which they claim has been shown to be very healthy in a bunch of previous studies, and it features the use of olive oil extensively. Since olive oil is typically more expensive, people were looking for an alternative. They go on to say that canola oil and olive oil are supposed to have a very similar monounsaturated fat content and variety. But then we get to the part that seems fishy. They reference other papers that show an olive oil-rich diet decreases the levels of certain proteins in a brain model. This should stand out because of that phrasing. Brain model. Not human brain. Brain model, which just means a particular kind of inbred mice. They also state that there's a lack of research on how canola oil compares in its effects on this model. So again, we're now only concerned with what canola oil will do to these kinds of mice and nothing else. Okay, now let's look at their methods and see how they set up their study. Immediately things jump out as big warning signs. First, they're using triple transgenic mice. These are the inbred mice I was talking about before. These mice, regardless of what we do to them, will develop the sorts of things we associate with Alzheimer's disease. Buildups of certain proteins, tangles, and memory and behavior impairment. This is important because it already casts doubt on the applicability of their findings outside of this model. The next thing is their sample size. They only use 12 control mice and 10 test mice, and this is a really small sample size, which means that the likelihood that their results were skewed by probability are very high. They also say that they used male and female mice, but don't include how many of each they used in each group. To test the mice's behavior, they use three different tests. Two mazes, one where the maze is dry and the other one where it's full of water, and then a fear conditioning test where they give the mouse a cue and then shock it and see what it does when they just give them a cue. If the mouse reacts, that counts as a pass. After the behavioral test, they examine the biochemistry of the mice by an array of biochemical tests post-mortem. The final thing that stands out is how they applied their canola oil. The control group got regular mouse chow, which is a complete diet in chow form containing everything they need to survive. The test group got the chow supplemented with canola oil, so already they're getting way more calories and the balance of nutrient intake has been thrown off. Or at least that's the way I'm understanding this because more information on how they dealt with the food is completely lacking. For me, all of this would already be enough to condemn this study to the waste bin, but let's look at the results. First up is the weight of the mice at the end of the trial. As expected, the overfed canola mice gained weight. No real surprise there. Next up is the behavior testing. Thankfully, the authors took the time to mark out the only result that was statistically significant with a helpful little star. Funny how they claim that the behavior results were significantly different when looking at the graphs showed that there's no major difference in most of these tests. The only time the mice had issues was in the first Y maze test, and even then, only barely. Moving on to the biochemical tests, we see a lot of the same thing. Only in one or two instances were the test mice noticeably different, and even then, the results are called into question because of how poorly they designed this study. Finally, let's wrap up with their discussion. As expected, they do the same thing as before and claim significance when there is none. Throughout this section, they seem to waffle back and forth. First they'll claim there is significance, then they'll admit there is none, and then they go back and do it again. At the end of the section, they close out by saying that this study does not provide support for a switch from olive oil to canola oil, which I think is fair, both because their results have more holes than Swiss cheese, but also because they didn't have a third test group which was fed olive oil that they can even compare to. I hope all of this has given you an idea of how subtle changes in methodology and wording can mean the difference between a good study and a bad one. You can also see how a journalist skimming this could have easily missed all of this by simply reading the abstract. This is why it's so important to read the whole paper. Yes, it takes more time, but in the end, if you don't, you can't actually make claims about what the paper does and doesn't say. I chose this paper because it's been circulating a lot lately, and already I'm hearing people talk about how bad canola oil is, based only on those articles. And that's the danger. If this was something more important, like, say, a poorly written paper claiming vaccines cause autism, that belief can spread and can literally lead to the deaths of hundreds of people. This was the case with studies that claimed to show that vitamin C could cure HIV or ginger cures cancer. The studies simply don't back up those claims, yet they spread like the plague. So next time you hear a sensational claim, always be sure to head over to Sci-Hub and read the paper yourself. Since this video covers a paper that's complete garbage, next time we're going to do one that isn't. I've got some ideas of which ones I want to cover, but if you've got suggestions for good or bad papers, leave them in the comments and I'll try and address as many as I can in future videos. Maybe there's a topic that's really complicated and you want me to break it down, or a commonly held belief that's based on poorly written garbage like this. All of it's fair game, and I look forward to seeing all of your suggestions. So be sure to check back every week for the next Mad Science Monday. As I mentioned last week, I'm working on filling my store with all sorts of goodies, and I'm excited to show off the latest edition. 
One of my favorite projects this past year was pulling images off of passing weather satellites, and it was the inspiration for this new design. Links in the description where you can get one of these for yourself. While you're there, be sure to check out the other designs I've already added. I'm trying to add a new design every week or two, so if you've got ideas for a design, leave it in the description and I'll try and bring as many as I can to life. Okay guys, that's all I've got for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a rating, subscribe, and click the bell icon to see new videos. As always, a big thank you to the patrons of this channel. I use every penny to help make new videos and always appreciate your support. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.